behind the wheel of the i4 M50, you feel like you're sitting behind the wheel of any M-badged 4 series. And that's not a coincidence because just as Ford decided to electrify the Mustang and the F-150, two of its most iconic brands, BMW has decided to electrify its performance sedans as well as its regular sedans. And that makes this car something of a, a unicorn in the electric vehicle world, especially at a time when everyone else is making crossover SUVs and out and out SUVs and pickup trucks. BMW is still making a performance sedan. Of course, this is going to cross shop against the Tesla Model 3. But I would argue that the kind of person who buys a Tesla Model 3 and the kind of person who would buy an i4 M50 are completely different. You buy a Model 3 because you like tech. You want to have the promise of autopilot full self-driving. You drive an i4 M50 because you want to drive it. The steering wheel is very comfortable and refined. It's not a weird shape. It doesn't have weird buttons on it. It's a BMW steering wheel and it's finished to a high standard. The center display here, it's full color. It extends across from the driver's side. And yes, that's become de rigueur in the EV industry these days. But the evolution of the iDrive system is frankly a blessing in disguise. I hated the original iDrive system because the only way you could interact with the display in the center of the car was to use that funky, fun little wheel that never really did what you wanted it to. These days, you can still use the iDrive wheel or you can just reach out and use your finger. As with every other vehicle that we've been looking at here at the Portland International Auto Show, we're going to do the rear seat test, but let's face it, you don't buy an i4 M50 as a family car. I'm on the large side, I don't mind admitting. I'm also 42, so I don't mind admitting that. And I'm five foot eight, but well, just watch the contortions. <sighs> <sighs> If I put my bum right in the back of the rear seat and I imagine that I'm gonna put my seat belt on, there are two things that are apparent. First, I don't think anybody would want to sit in the middle. Secondly, I can't really keep my head straight. But then again, this is an electric vehicle built for the Norge life, not family life. Again, as I just, aptly illustrated at the back of the vehicle, the i4 M50 is not a family vehicle. And that means it doesn't have a whole lot of storage. That is true up front too, where there's no front trunk. Just uh, mm, to tell you that this car has extra points for power. But all jokes aside, the other thing that strikes you are the heat sinks by the headlights. That's because this car has matrix headlights. I checked this morning. The recent change in law in the US means that matrix headlights are now legal here. And the i4 M50, just like the rest of BMW's electric future lineup, will come with active matrix headlights. That's going to be fun to drive. The rear of this car, though, is pretty impressive because while it is called a sedan it's actually a hatchback and that's one of my pet peeves if the back end lifts up it's a hatchback even if it looks like a sedan a winter is off camera shaking his head at me but you know what i'm in front of a camera so i get to say what i think anyway owning an i4 m50 hatchback is a bonus because a lot of people i know who like high-end performance sedans are the kind of people who like to go to the racetrack and do a track day, but they also might like to go and do cycle racing, whether it be mountain biking or road racing, or maybe even they're a triathlete and they want to put all of their sports gear in the back of their car and take it to an event. And 
Because this is a hatchback, you can fold down the rear seats. And as Winter noted when we were looking around the car earlier, if you did want to take this to a track day, you could have a set of semi-slicks or slicks that you just throw in the back of the car so that when you get there, you nip into the pit garage, you put on your track day wheels and tires, maybe something a bit lighter than what's currently on here to give you the absolute best uptime, and you wouldn't have to worry about damaging your street legal tires. But if you do want to get the very best lap time, you may want to ditch the Harman Kardon amplifier in the back. That said, Harman Kardon really does make good audio equipment for cars. So that's it, the i4 M50. We hope to put this car through its paces soon, both on the road and on the track. And as usual, when we do, we'll share it with you here on the channel. That's it for today. If you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. If you haven't already, make sure you've subscribed to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolve Take Two, and give the bell a gentle ding to make sure you're told when our next video goes live. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew. Go out to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month supporters, Chris Maxwell, Bennett Elder, Brian Newton, Jason Bordor, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tazla in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ray Jean Fellows, Rory Litwin, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness, and Denny Hyde. And our deepest gratitude goes to our $100 a month supporters. They are Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Laura Reynolds, Paul Conway, Ellery Hannersley, and Ian. If you're feeling left out, you can join Patreon at the link below. Click the join button on YouTube to become a channel member or show us your support through Bitcoin or Kofi or indeed our cool swag store. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for joining us at the Portland International Auto Show. This is our last report. So until next year or another video from the channel, keep evolving.